What's up everybody, Jason here. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Profit Rev2 synthesizer and do some vintage voice modeling and take a look at a couple of uh, new template patches that I've created that you can download for free that I'll have links to in the description below. So vintage voice modeling is something that I have been studying and uh, discussing on various forums over the past couple of years. Uh, if you followed me on gear sites or Facebook forums or random other places, you've probably seen the discussions about this. Uh, but a couple years back, I set out to do a bunch of research on classic polysynths to try to understand what gives them the organic character that they have that everyone lusts for and wants in modern synthesizers. The research that I did, I recorded tons of classic synths, uh, Yamaha CS80s, OBXs, Old Profits, Jupiters, and various other uh, Memory Moog and other synthesizers. This website here, voicecomponentmodeling.com, really details uh, my, the research that I did and the findings that I made on per voice variants for these old synthesizers. If you want to get more information, just go ahead and check out this voice component modeling website. It talks a lot about the existing approaches we have for giving per voice offsets and the upsides and downsides of each approach and some additional thoughts on more advanced voice modeling topics. I won't go into this in detail right now, but I'll just leave a link to this website down below if you want to read up some more information. Um, on my preset patch profile, I have uploaded a bunch of template patches that have voice modeling built in for the Profit Rev2 and some other synthesizers as well. These two patches right here are the two new ones that I just uploaded and what we'll be discussing in this video. So this one is a VCM Basic 5 Voice Vintage 80 and Basic 5 Voice Vintage 85. These are two variants of a similar template patch. The Vintage 81 just has some more aggressive per voice uh, variants to it. It's a little looser and more organic. The Vintage 85 one is a little bit tighter, but still has per voice variants. In addition, I do have a bunch of more complex uh, voice component modeling templates in here, but the point of these two new templates was to give you some very basic, boiled down, uh, most simplified version of voice modeling on the Profit Rev 2. So you can build patches from these, but still have as much sound design real estate as possible. So these two new patches, two new templates, just use just the gated sequencer and two modulation slots. So you still have six mod slots, all the LFOs, all the envelopes, and all that other stuff to build out your sound designs. So I'll put a link in the description below for my profile here. You can download these for free. Okay, so let's jump in. So this is the Vintage 80 patch. This is the one with a little bit more voice variance. Let me just switch over here to this view. There we go. So yeah, this is the Vintage 81. It has a little bit more variance. This is what it sounds like, first off. So this is basically just an initialized patch. It's just two sawtooths mixed here with a little bit more of the first one and just a teeny bit of envelope shaping. So for a basically initialized patch, it already has some interest to it. So it's not just a static sound. Uh, the reason for that is because we are doing per voice variances here. With the gated sequencer and this technique with the Rev2, we're using the gated sequencer basically as a lookup table for giving per voice variances. These first two lanes in the gated sequencer target oscillator one frequency and oscillator two frequency, giving per voice offsets to frequency. The third and fourth slots target all attack and all release, giving temporal offsets to the envelopes. For the oscillator one and oscillator two frequency, the way these values work is the closer to 62 these values are set, the more perfectly in tune that voice and that oscillator will be. So as you get farther away from 62 positive, you get a couple cents sharp. If you go negative, it goes flat. So um, these are just set like this. You can play around with these uh, to your heart's content to, to vary the per voice behavior and the uh, oscillator tuning on a per voice as you want. Um, the other thing to note here is I've set a, a reset on step six on all of four of these lanes here. 
and what this is doing is virtually creating a five voice polysynth within the 16 voice Rev2 or eight voice, whichever one you have. Uh, so you can adjust this also if you want, you could change the reset to step nine, for instance, would give you a virtual eight voice polysynth within your Rev2. Every time it loops around, it'll come back to the beginning one and capture that per voice offset. So we've got oscillator one, oscillator two frequency, and then all attack and all release. What these attack and release uh, offsets are doing is they're speeding up the attack or release stage uh, by a small or large amount if you have really long release or attack times. And what this does is it creates temporal offsets uh, for the cutoff peak on a per voice basis. So each voice is different. So let's uh, just compare here what the sound of the voice component modeling is versus uh, without any voice modeling, just the standard patch setup. So what I have here is on layer A, I have the voice component modeling set up. On layer B, I have the exact same setup, same oscillator mix of two saws and same envelopes. So I'm just gonna switch between the two of them so you can hear the difference between the voice modeling and without. So uh, here's voice modeling. And without. So with without with and without so as you can tell there you can hear quite clearly and see also in the oscilloscope and spectrograph uh, without the voice modeling it's a much more static sound every time i hit one of the keys each of the oscillators is perfectly in tune for that key, and all of the envelopes uh, progress at the exact same rate. It, they attack at the same rate, decay at the same rate, and release at the same rate. So with the voice modeling built in, it adds all of this interest, this uh, natural phasing on a per voice basis. The small natural phasing adds up and creates this very organic, uh, classic polysynth type of sound that you would get if you played a classic 70s or 80s polysynth like a CS80 or an OPX or an old Prophet or Memory Moog. As you can hear there, without any sound design, just the sawtooth, there's already a lot of interest to it. Uh, let's just uh, crank up the resonance here and make this more of a pad type of sound. So I'll increase the uh, attack and release by a bunch. We'll bring the sustain down a little and create a little bit of a fall off here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just increase the resonance so you'll be able to really hear what's going on with the envelope offsets, with the temporal offsets. So I'm just shaping here a sort of a pad type of sound, how I might set it up. Like that. Yeah, that's getting it, okay. I'm gonna bring down the cutoff and bring up key amount a little so it's based on key. Let's listen to that. Now you can really see it. Uh, so not only can you hear it, but you can see it if you look down in the spectral graph. Uh, when I'm hitting all these notes simultaneously, uh, each of these notes is assigned one of these virtual voices, and they're all progressing at a different temporal rate in the envelopes. If you look and listen for the resonant peaks, you'll see that they all progress up at different rates and decay at different rates. And then when I release the keys, they all release down at different rates. <laughs> So that's a more extreme example, but I just wanted to show what's going on, how the per voice modeling is affecting the temporal rates of the ADR stages. Um, for a pad type of sound, I probably would not have uh, this aggressive uh, voice differences on the attack and release here. I'd probably bring these down a bit so there's not a multiple second offset um, and make it more like a smaller values here like this. So the reason for this is uh, the ADR timings 
they scale exponentially with the input value. If you have a really fast attack or decay and release sound, like you're building a, a pluck or a lead type of sound or bass, and your attack time is somewhere in the 20 or 30 region, you know the difference between having a 20 attack and 30 attack might only be a few milliseconds difference. Whereas once you get up into the higher times here, the difference between 100 and 110 might be multiple seconds, might be a three second difference. Just something to be aware of that uh, the ADR stages uh, scale exponentially and you may want to dial back the attack and release and decay times that you said in voice modeling uh, for pad type of sounds. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if I was to build a, <clears throat> a pad, I probably would not have it be the squelchy. I'd probably bring down the resonance a bit. At this point, you can you know go nuts with sound design and uh, change things up. The idea with these new patch templates that I uploaded was to give you a really boiled down, simplest approach to voice modeling and leave the most modulation real estate. So we're only targeting four parameters here. Here, let me bring up this document real quick. This document, I just quickly put this together to sort of give my ideas on what I would say is the top priorities for voice modeling. There are tons of different parameters you can target on a per voice basis to create really nuanced, uh, classic type of sounds. And also modeling acoustic ensemble type of instruments. Voice modeling is great for that if you want to have realistic string ensembles or brass or other sounds like that. So the top priorities here, uh, just determining uh, how much sound design real estate you want to dedicate to voice modeling versus have it for building out your sounds. I would say the top things are hitting oscillator one and two frequency with per voice offsets, hitting the attack and release times with per voice offsets like we did in this patch. If you wanted to devote more of the mod matrix, you could uh, model the decay on a per voice basis. You could model the VCF cutoff or key amount. You could map it to resonance, which creates a, a per voice adjustment in resonance. Uh, you can map it to the filter envelope amount or amp envelope amount, which is going to adjust on a per voice basis uh, how much the VCA envelope amount is implemented. Uh, you can model in the oscillator levels or in the instance of uh, the Profit Rev 2, we just have the single oscillator mix control that mixes the levels between uh, oscillator 1 and 2. And then sort of a tier 3, I would say you could do a per voice offsets to LFO frequency. If you're using uh, LFOs for something, you could have slight frequency offsets on a per voice basis to create more organic character in the LFOs and possibly doing a shape mod as well. So these are the uh, sort of top priority voice modeling targets. In addition, one of the things that I measured on many classic synths and I do on my more advanced patches is I model the oscillator frequency not just on a per voice basis, but I multiplex it through note number to create per voice offsets with oscillator scaling or intonation where the keyboard gets progressively more sharp or more flat as you go up or down the keybed. This was the behavior that I measured in most of the classic poly synths and mono synths that I set out to record and uh, do analysis on. So you can do per voice uh, intonation modeling if you want to get into that. Some of the other patches that I have on my preset patch profile do integrate intonation modeling if you want to check that out. In addition, you can model other parameters with voice modeling like uh, advanced macro behaviors, transient pitch settle effects, harmonic jitter on a per voice basis. So another one of the things that I uh, studied is that all VCOs have uh, this harmonic jitter or phase jitter associated with them, this high frequency but relatively low amount of jitter. Uh, you can model that with a LFO and route that on a per voice basis if you want. And you can really do other things too, more macro type behaviors, combining the envelopes and LFOs and uh, route that all on a per voice basis by just routing uh, the modulation sequence slots. 
to the LFOs or to other parameters. So yeah, the sky's the limit with voice modeling. You can really get pretty deep with this stuff. But yeah, these two new patches are really just meant to give you a basic starting point. Instead of starting from an, in an initialized patch, you can jump in with these templates and quickly build out sound designs that incorporate the core of the classic poly sound, uh, that classic character of per voice offsets. So I think uh, for this video, I think that'll about do it. If you have any questions about voice modeling, feel free to leave questions uh, down below or comments about this video. If you like this video, like it, subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll see more content like this. I do a bunch of other uh, sound design tutorials on the Profit, Rev2, uh, Sequential Pro 3, and other synthesizers as well. So I think, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this video. Have a good one. Wow.